All right, everybody, welcome to the video. This is going to be the install montage of the KM4 OVZ slash North Alabama Tech Team repeater going up on uh, Brindley Mountain. So this is a tower trailer, and during transport, we had our main transmit antenna stowed on the side of the tower, so I'm taking it down here. And then I'm unstrapping the tower from the uh, carriage that uh, keeps it from bouncing up and down while we're going down the road. Not that it would, it's pretty heavy but uh, it's just an extra double measure. So we got the strap undone, and now it's free to start tilting up here. The tilt-up mechanism is a hand crank, and it took me about, I want to say about five or six minutes to crank this thing up all the way, and it was a lot of work. I actually had to oil the uh, worm gear while cranking it up because it got a little stuck. And when it gets to that final stage, right before it's about to uh, level out, it kind of tilts over on its own. So with that, we go ahead and tighten it down and uh, put the oil away. But as you can see, it's tightened down so it can't swing forward. The trailer will keep it from swinging forward. The next step is to level the trailer using the base feet. And uh, I use these big old pavers and stones to sort of give it more surface area. Some of the jacks didn't want to fit underneath, so we had to actually jack the front of the trailer up to get them under, but it wasn't a big deal. We got them centered and leveled out underneath each jack. Once the trailer's level, it's pretty easy to level the tower itself. Then next we took these ground anchors. These are normally used to tie down all manner of things from buildings to propane tanks to, uh, I don't know, towers. <laughs> well, we've got our tower guide down with these things. So there's three of these at each corner of the tower. And uh, they go about three feet into the ground. The ground there is fairly rocky. We had a little bit of trouble getting them in all the way. But uh, I'm very confident that these will not rip out. And I know some of y'all are saying you can't use carabiners. Um, we checked the weight rating on the carabiners before putting them in, and they're also not a permanent solution. Uh, given that this is only a 100 foot tower with minimal wind loading, got some pretty heavy duty carabiner. Well, they're not carabiners, I don't know what they're called, but uh, we got those in, and we got three of these anchors on each quarter. So the guy wiring situation is pretty good. I'm not worried about it blowing over in any kind of windstorm. It's very solid. I climbed to the top of the tower and wiggled it back and forth with my body weight and it didn't really move at all so I'm pretty happy with it I know it's not commercial grade professional hard, an install but it, it'll work for our uh, amateur purposes pretty well I think there's plenty of tension on all these the hardest one to do was the final one because there was already tension on the other two sides of the tower. So we got all three of them tensioned out evenly and uh, the thing doesn't move at all. The next step was for me to climb to the top of the tower and put the antenna on. Uh, this was kind of a sketchy process. I was hanging on to the tower and the antenna. The antenna actually had a slight little bend in the topmost element from uh, when we were laying it on the ground. It's a little fragile and I know this antenna is not the greatest build quality ever but I was just straightening it out a little bit. We are going to replace this antenna eventually with a commercial grade antenna but uh, I already had the pole clamps up there. It's uh, two Comscope pole mount clamps that are holding that together. So I just set the base of the antenna inside the first one, tightened it down and then put the bracket on the second one and uh, it was fairly easy to do. The antenna is light enough that I didn't feel like I was going to fall off the tower with, uh, with holding it in my hands. I got this uh, really big adjustable wrench that I was using to torque them down, so they're really tight on there. Uh, again, very solid. I'm not worried about it doing anything funky. Then I climbed down and quickly returned with the feed line, and the feed line is ran up the inside of the tower, so it is uh, running on the inside of all four sections, not the outside. I did have it on the outside of the previous install, and I didn't like how it uh, how that worked out. So we got it on the inside now. It's a little more protected, and uh, it'll move around less until we get it strapped up. 
to the inside of the tower. So that was overall pretty optimal and it makes it easier to do strain relief because you don't want your feed line hanging from the connector. You want to actually take the weight of the feed line off the wire. So it's an end connector. Always use end connector on this kind of stuff. And um, we strapped it to the, to the pole there in a sort of spiral pattern to uh, do strain relief. A lot of people do the loop, like a drip loop. And I've done that in the past, but I feel like that's distressing the coax out a little too much, a little too much bend on it. So we did it this way. It's straight and has all the feline uh, weight reduced. Now we're uh, raising it. As you can see, it's a lot darker outside. It uh, We lost light really quick. The sun goes down at 4.50 p.m., so we were running out of time. We uh, got everything so sorted out on the ground and started raising it. This uh, trailer has a built-in winch, which was very handy during the uh, erection process. Just put the button and the tower starts going up. We left the top guy wires pretty loose while raising it because we had to get the height just right. At this point, we have the, uh, the three guy wires tightened down at the top and we were just raising it enough to, uh, to tighten them down all the way. So there is plenty of tension and then we walked around the tower to ensure everything was level and then we uh, adjusted it if it needed it. It didn't really need it. Now that the tower's up, we're installing the repeater itself. We got a little short server rack here with the controller, the repeater, the internet, and the Zello interface is all installed in there as well as the power supply. So it's a pretty handy little thing to have, a little server rack. It makes everything easier and uh, it's portable so you can carry it around. It was very heavy but uh, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. So we got it set up here and there's a lot of wires and connections I had to make. Uh, we have a UPS in the cabinet that just runs a certain, the uh, repeater itself and the uh, controller. So if the power goes out, the repeater will stay online until that little office grade UPS fails. <laughs> So uh, it's something, but eventually we're going to have a much better backup power solution, I hope. And we have a little window unit in there just to cool it during the summer. It doesn't need it during the winter, but during the summer it can get pretty warm under continuous duty use. So we got a little window unit, which does very well. It doesn't have amazing ventilation. I need to add some cooling fans to actually suck the uh, hot air out of the box while it's being replaced with cold air from the window unit. But even without that, the temperature inside the cabinet was very low uh, when it was on even the window unit on low was enough to keep more than keep up with uh, the summer heat and the repeater heat generated itself. So here we turn it on and uh, power it up and we do some uh, radio checks just to make sure it's working at the site. This was the first moment when uh, I noticed the crackling noise that wasn't really present on receive when I was standing there with my handheld but as soon as our signal got weaker than that as we drove away the crackling noise became very apparent which is duplex noise. Here we are connecting up our internet. We use a uh, 4G LTE hotspot. This is when we're doing our radio checks here. Oh, it's loud and clear. Uh, the modulation is uh, is loud, very loud and clear. Um, and uh, no, I don't hear any anomalous noises or anything. It sounds good. Well, I appreciate you coming back to me here. I think we're just about done. It's dark out here. There's not much else we can do today, so we're about to pack up and go home. Well, there you go. It sounds good. It's good to know it's up on the air. <laughs> Will you be um, on here on Zello for about an hour, just like on the side, so you should give us signal reports as we drive home? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be standing by. Roger on that. I'll give a call out every few minutes here. KM4 OBZ. And this is a video I took a week after the install. We came back and did some work on it. So uh, here's my commentary on that. And uh, there you go. That's pretty much the video. Well, here we are at the end of the video. Uh, we didn't do a crazy good job of documenting the install process, but I think we got most of the key steps in there. We're about 80 foot right now. The guy wires that this trailer came with, well first of all there's only two of them, and second of all they're cut for 80 foot. So the trailer right now is 20 foot short of what it could be. It actually probably is a little more than 20 feet short. We're probably right now at about 70 feet if I had to guess our, uh, our height. So um, we're going to be actually maybe even shorter than that to be honest. 
So this is still going to go up a lot. You can see how much of the sections are still inside each other. They go up to be about a third of what they're at now. So we got quite a bit more height we can gain off of it, but I got to get new guy wires for that. I just spent the time today installing a security camera on the tower so that we can actually watch who comes and goes because we've had people actually show up at these tower sites and try and figure out what's going on. I know the, guy, the uh, feed line is still dangling in there. It is tied up at the top with uh, strain relief, but down here it does uh, flop around a little bit. So that's going to be one of the things I fix once we get it up to full height because if I do it now I'm going to have a lot of work to do whenever I want to race it all the way. So, Overall, the transmit coverage is really, really good. We reach about, I want to give it a, I give it a rating of about, mm, I want to say 40 to 50 miles um, over open ground at its current height, which is amazing. And uh, it goes over mountains and stuff too, pretty good. So uh, I'm really happy with the performance of this whole thing. We're running 50 watts into the duplexers, so we're getting about 25 at the antenna because this is a six can duplexer set. It's designed for a really high power. And we're gonna add more amps and stuff to this later to get the power going, because right now at low power, that's not, I, we're gonna get this thing booming, trust me. So uh, we're, we're doing pretty good. We just spent time today, um, I added a, a new computer to the setup so I can remote in and change settings and all that stuff uh, remotely. And um, we sorted out a lot of the duplex noise issues we were having. Uh, there was a lot of crackling on the input signal um, during transmit and uh, we found part, we, well we know what's causing it now and we got rid of most of the problem I do need to come back and really foolproof it but I'm gonna do that once it's at full height so overall the KM4 OVZ rebel renegade pirate repeater whatever you want to call it is up on the air and it's doing good I'm really happy with it and uh, I look forward to using this thing a lot it's gonna be really cool with that, I'll go ahead and end the video. Thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll make another video soon with a, a hardware tour. Although there is already a hardware tour up on the North Alabama Tech Team YouTube channel. So if you want to see what equipment we're running, go watch that. And after that, I guess I'll say 73s to everybody. Bye-bye-bye.